so freeing. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I'm so excited to have you on today. Um, I was telling, well, or was, I started off basically saying that I think you're going to be, or what you have to say today is going to be so valuable because everybody is busy these days. Everybody or a lot of people know that they are capable of more, that there is more in store for them and they're unhappy where they're at at the moment. They're just feeling held back by their current lifestyle or they think they, you know, are being a little bit overweight, that's normal, whatever. But deep down, I think so many people have know that they can get in great shape, that they can be happy in their body and that they can truly feel healthy and so on. And so I think your transformation for one is a really great example, but also just the things that you do with your clients. So um, yeah, if you would love, if you would like to just start by, I guess, giving people a bit of a background about who you are, what your journey was, um, and then we'll get more into the work that you do with your clients as well. Totally. Well, first off, thanks for having me. And pleasure, really. yeah, as far as who I work with, I work with busy professionals and I help them lose fat and get healthy essentially. And as far as my journey goes, well, I do that online too. I do online nutritional coaching and online mm -hmm. workout design. And as far as my journey goes, like I played a ton of sports. And then once I hit high school, I started to specialize a little bit more in you know, basketball and football, American football were my sports. And I wanted to put on some weight because I wanted to get a little bit more muscular and just not be, you know, that skinny kid on the football field kind of thing. <laughs> and I did, it worked, but it just, it worked too well. <laughs> and I put on more and more weight as I went through high school. And by the time I was a senior, I'm, I'm five foot 10, I was 190 pounds, which doesn't sound crazy heavy, but for 5'10 with my build um, and my position that I played, like I played receiver and corner, it just wasn't necessary to be that big. And I was just carrying a lot of extra body fat. <clears throat> and then after high school, I stopped playing competitive sports as much and I continued to eat in the same way and things just got out of hand my expenditure went down my alcohol intake went up and my food intake or habits stayed you know virtually the same and it was just this recipe for you know fat gain I, my digestion was funky i have a couple of autoimmune conditions which you know fortunately i'm able to manage via diet now but everything just sort of went awry and then I figured out how to get things on track, which was so empowering. And I felt like after I got myself healthy that I just, I had to help other folks do oh, this as that. well. Yeah, it was just like, I felt like I had to share because it was <laughs> such a powerful, you know, intervention for me. Yeah. And so that's, you know, how I sort of got into nutritional coaching and it's awesome. been 10 years now and so far so good knock on wood <laughs> well, my, I mean first of all thanks so much for sharing that and so much um, I think cool information in there already because so many people obviously with like is it freshman 15 or whatever people talk about you know like you're used to a certain activity level and you're used to in your teens especially great metabolism and you just you know you can eat whatever your body doesn't really mind but then um, you you change your lifestyle more to partying and whatever but you continue eating that way and then that transformation I think so many people can probably relate to that um I'd be curious like what were the main things that like helped you educate yourself or how did you gain that knowledge of okay that's what I should be doing instead because there's so much confusing information out there you know did you do did you try different diets? Did you do take a course? Did you have someone help you? How, how did you learn? Yeah, just a, a ton of mistakes. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> much trial and error. Like I wanted there to be some special diet where, you know, I remember doing this body for life program. I don't know if you ever, ever heard of that, but it was I like, have not, no. okay, so you eat you know, really quote unquote clean throughout the week for six days. And then you have one day where you eat whatever you want. Okay. So I was okay, like, yeah. Oh, this is amazing. I'm an <laughs> abstainer. This will work perfectly for me. <laughs> and the thing was, 
is that I worked so hard Monday through Saturday. And then on Sunday, I overate to such a degree that I erased my progress, my deficit from the entire week. And wow. so it was an amazing way just to spin my wheels. And I felt like mm -hmm. I was working so hard Monday through Saturday, but then I just, I didn't care at all on a Sunday. And I, I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. And so <laughs> it was so much trial and error. And finally, I discovered that, you know, the, the principles, the foundations are what are going to get me results. And as soon as I accepted that, and I just mm. doubled down, stayed consistent, and really followed through and committed to that, uh, to the four pillars as I see them, which are nutrition, movement, sleep and stress management. As soon as I really committed to that, I, I got the results that I was after that whole time after just, I mean, so much so much wasting time essentially and so well but yeah. but i mean lessons that you learned and uh, as you say like at least now you're a coach and those are lessons that um you can use so that other people don't have to make those same mistakes or like uh, having having gone through the same thing so i love it i love the concept of the pillars and clearly those pillars don't just work for you they work for your clients also i had to browse through your website And I mean, amazing transformations, really like not just weight loss, but like clearly shining pe people shining from the inside out and um, looking healthier on every level and more definition, like really, really beautiful stuff. So uh, if you don't mind, take me through um, how you teach those pillars to, to your clients when you onboard them or when, when you start working with them. Yeah, totally. So basically I send them a, a pretty comprehensive questionnaire because we want to get clear on, you know, what this individual's goals are uh, first and foremost, what they're committed to, what they're willing to, you know, do lifestyle wise mm -hmm. and what they're not willing to, you know, it's all about trade-offs. And so we put, or I put together a nutrition program based on, you know, their schedule, lifestyle needs, wants, oh, cool. um, yes. you know, things that they, maybe aren't willing to give up. Um, alcohol is one of those things where it really varies between my clients as far as how much they consume and, you know, just understanding meals out, all of that sort of stuff. So we put together a nutrition program that fits for them. I have my, all of my clients at least aim to hit 10,000 steps per day. If they want to work out on top of that, I see that as a bonus. Um, oh. Yeah. I do not require my clients to, to go to the gym. If they don't want to do that, that's totally their call. It also depends on how they want to look. Like I, I tell them that they're not going to build any muscle if they don't, if they don't resistance train, sure. of course. Yeah. But some people just, it, it's not a priority and they feel really good with like hitting their 10,000 steps, dialing in the nutrition and then sleep wise, you know, seven to nine hours per night, getting good sleep hygiene in place. Um, mm -hmm and setting them up for success. And the beautiful thing about the nutrition, movement and sleep stuff is that it often handles a lot of the stress management in and of mm -hmm. itself. Because people are like, I'm so stressed out. What do I do? What is the, like, the stress management tactic? Do I need to start meditating? Do I need to like, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And it's like, let's get these things in place that have us thrive just on a basic human level we are animals and that is nutrition movement and sleep and so when we dial those three in the stress management piece often handles itself and then if things do come up you're just so much better equipped to handle those things with those other three pillars in place does that make sense oh 100 and i think even just to the point of the 10,000 steps I think um, walking is actually such a great form of stress management and meditation. Of course, granted that you don't necessarily look at your phone or answer one million horrible calls at the same time. But, you know, if you go out into the daylight and you get your steps, that's one of the best forms of therapy for most people. Like, you know, talking about stress management and that on top of um, your good sleep and so on, seven hours, that's, that's, that itself is so beneficial for mental health. So... I absolutely love those basic pillars. And um, I, I also really like what you said in the sense of 
asking them what they are willing to give up because I can imagine that according to that you can or it helps themselves and helps you to justify or to outline how long their journey will take right so if someone comes to you and they say hey I want to drink two glasses of wine every single night and but then they tell you they want to lose two kg per week then you can clearly say hey do you see the discrepancy here um if you're happy to you know reduce that a little bit and we're meeting somewhere in the middle to like losing a kg or so per week is that something you'd be happy to do or if you want to continue with your two glasses of wine every single night would you be happy with like half a kg per week you know like it 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 it's almost like um they get to choose their rate of progress to an extent at least because as opposed to like simply saying to you i want this and that but then in the end complaining or whatever that um they didn't get there fast enough because they make their own choice right so i i love that i think that that's a really great approach and it just helps clarify a timeline for people because i find often that's what one of the things that holds or where people lose motivation because their expectations are in, unrealistic and um you know they head into that with with that expectation and then it's not working as fast as they want or the same way that they want um, and then two three weeks oh that's not working or it's too slow but if 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 they say themselves okay i do want to drink i'm accepting that it's moving a bit slower that's cool <laughs> you know then then you're both on the same page it just makes communication really really easy so i love it yeah totally that's a that's a great point and i i yeah i like to take that approach with my clients because they truly can progress as fast as they want to progress and for sure um they're the body never lies and it is a perfect reflection of the inputs and the more that you put in the more that you get out it it really is that simple but the choice like you said is huge because the choice is theirs ultimately at the end of the day we are not with our clients 24 7 um and and you know everything everything weighs up differently everybody is so different in the sense of what they prioritize like for some folks you know having that two glasses of wine might be like a net win for them lifestyle wise in comparison to, to scaling that back a little bit. And the only person that can make that choice is them and no judgment. It's just, we no, have to temper, temper expectation based on, you know, those inputs again. Yeah, definitely. It gives, it gives, it gives them ownership and it gives them some sense of, you know, control and, and, and also, yeah, uh, their own perception of like, okay, maybe I can speed this up if I, do say no to that second glass of wine. Yeah. Thing. So, no, absolutely cool. I, 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 I like the four pillars and I love the individualization piece. I mean, um, I think if anything with nutrition coaching, individualization is so, so important. But nonetheless, I'd be curious to know if, um, or if you had to give like everybody one to three things or so to focus on, like everybody in the world in order to be healthier, um, what, what what would that be? Would that be those part of those pillars? Or if you could pick like one of them or even just like practical advice, is there something you would um, tell people? Yeah, well, uh, it, it would be those, it would be the nutrition movement and sleep. And then with the, the fourth pillar being the stress management, but I'll make that more practical because it's just cool. so umbrella. Love it, yeah. Nutrition wise, the first whistle stop for me is, you know, shifting your food environment in a way that makes it easier to eat in the way that you want to eat. So eat in the way that is congruent with your goals. If you have food around that, you know, is highly tempting, hyper palatable and calorie dense, it is not a matter of if you're going to eat it, it is when. That is evolutionary oh, biology. That is gold, yes. Yeah, so, it, and it's it's not because you know, you're, you're weak and you're not disciplined and you have no willpower. It is quite literally, we are animals. That is the way that we're designed. Um, it's called optimal foraging theory or optimal foraging strategy. We want to, the advice of eat, eat less, move more is perfectly contrary to our evolutionary biology. And so mm -hmm. having those treat foods around or the things, the foods that 
you don't want to eat easily accessible it just makes things so much harder on yourself so i like to have my clients first and foremost set themselves up for success via their food environment um i love that as a as a as like the practical takeaway because um i think It, as you say, it makes it makes all the difference, and it makes it just makes life easier for you. It really, really does. And we all, I always like to refer to like willpower as something like you ha you have a bucket of willpower essentially, and you know if you you have to make so many decisions all over the day, like what route am I taking? What am I um, to to work or like decisions, right? Like what what route am I taking? What am I wearing? Oh no, I'm not going to go on social media right now. And you know, all that requires willpower. And then at the end of the day, your willpower bucket is nearly empty. And then you come home and you have all these cupboards full of the food that maybe your family is eating or whatever. Um, and you're not intending to eat, but that's when your willpower, you've run out. And even though you had your perfectly prepped um, fish and veggies and the steak, you're like, oh, I'm going to have pizza with my family. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. It, it really is. It really is so true, like setting yourself up more successfully. I think too, um, the, what, what's cool about that approach is it doesn't necessarily apply, imply that people can't ever have treat foods or whatever. It just means their environment is set up in a way that it's conducive to choosing the right thing. And if they want to have, an, have ice cream, they can make the conscious decision to, hey, I'm gonna go to this ice cream place and have ice cream tonight. But it's not the same thing as having a freezer full of all your favorite ice cream flavors. There is a big difference between that. So I think that that is a really, really great foundational practical tip for everybody, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, we've got technology like you can order Uber Eats anytime you want. I don't <laughs> think the issue is access, right? No. And so you might as well just set yourself up for success and make it easier, given that it's so hard. And yes. Yes. as far as discipline goes and willpower, the research is actually really clear in the sense that the folks that are the most quote unquote disciplined actually use their discipline the least. And mm -hmm. reason being is they understand their tendencies and they set themselves up for success within that. So instead of it being, you know, oh my God, these people are so disciplined. They're like, not like me because I'm, I lack discipline. No, they are just like you. They just set themselves up for success and they actually deplete that willpower bucket or discipline bucket less and less each day because they understand the way that that system works. Exactly. The systems, the habits, the routines, environment, all of that. That's, that's actually, yeah, no, I think a really good point. And would there be anything um, that you would add, add to the point of environment or setting yourself up in terms of environment as a tip? I mean, that's pretty much it yeah just keep main, like stocking yes. stocking the the fridge also with foods that you want to eat not just eliminating it like you want yes. food around <laughs> um so yeah making sure that I you think... have the things around that are going to contribute to your goals as opposed to you know sabotage them essentially cool cool yeah and i guess um in in terms of other points do you have personally or with your clients as well do you have any like I guess, unconventional tips um, or methods that have worked incredibly well for you that are either being debated by other people or people even say like, that's bullshit, don't focus on that. But you think that that's actually a big, big game changer. Is there anything that would come to mind in, in that kind of area? Yeah, totally. I'll just quickly um, address the other two pillars, like something practical. Yes. So movement wise, movement wise with the steps, the 10K steps, looking for moments in your day where you could be moving, but it not actually adding additional time to your day. For example, if you were on your phone, I, I implement a simple little rule with my clients that if you're on your phone, you're either standing or you're pacing around. So mm -hmm. if I'm walking around my place as I'm on my phone, I might get another couple thousand steps a day, depending on how much you move or how much you use your phone rather. And that stuff adds up and it doesn't actually add any yeah. additional time to your day. You know, phone calls, 
walks with friends instead of sitting at a restaurant you know you can go mm -hmm. grab a coffee and go for a stroll things like that sleep wise making sure that you are getting daylight exposure as early as possible so light entering your eye to anchor yes. your circadian rhythm and then yes. at nighttime you know if you do want to use a bunch of screens the closer you can go to bed to when the sun goes down the better we'd like to you know, two to three hours within the sun going within the sun going down. If you can be in bed and asleep, that is ideal. I realize that that's not always so practical, but that's sort of the goal. And mm -hmm. minimizing blue light exposure at night. And we can use tech for stuff like this too, like using F dot Lux and pulling the blue light out of your screens and, you know, just not watching maybe even a Netflix show that is going to rile you up and really stimulate you, but maybe something that's like, pretty chill and casual. Um, little things like that can really add to just better sleep, which then transfers into so many of, you know, other great habits. It's just going to set you up for success again, like the food environment. If you are sleeping well, you're much more likely to eat better and move more. Yeah, I think they call those um, keystone habits, right? Like if mm -hmm. you have one, if you implement one good habit, and then often, you know, it, automatically you're more inclined to do something else as well and one of my just on touching on the the sleep topic one of my pet peeves when it comes to sleep is phone in bed it makes me angry actually <laughs> <laughs> i mean not saying that i never used to do it but i think specifically because i used to do it and because i have had big issues with sleep and like you know on, on, ongoing well not ongoing but it really wrecked my hormones as well and because of that nowadays I am so meticulous about my sleep and I think um, I think one of the reasons why it makes me mad too is because I know how important it is what we put into our brain last thing before we go to bed and first thing in the morning I think it can ruin your entire day an entire night if you start off on the wrong foot or on the wrong, you know, message or whatever, you wake up and people are like, uh, grabbing their phone because of course for most people that's where the alarm is. But I mean, now, nowadays with smartphones and stuff like that, you can set your alarm on your phone. You can purchase a cheap $10, um, you know, alarm clock and leave your phone out of the room or at least on the opposite side of the room. So you have to get up and, and, and get it or whatever if you wanted to. But like first thing in the morning, looking at your phone and, if the first thing you would do would be listening to a podcast or calming music, cool, all good, power to you. But for most people, it's, oh, I got 10 messages or my emails or social media and you scroll and nine times out of 10, it makes you feel like crap about yourself because other people are doing something cooler or you get a negative message or whatever. And, and the, the, the base for me is just, it's a very reactive way to start or finish your day and it's not self-directed so that is a, a sorry little side rant but that's, <laughs> that's one of my pet peeves where I think it can be a huge game changer for people not looking at their phone La like last thing before going to sleep and first thing in the morning I think that yeah if, if that was like my one tip for everybody in the world it would be that <laughs> it's a great it's a great point and I think the easiest way to think about it is just first impressions like yeah, when you meet absolutely. someone for the first time that first impression really matters and if yeah. it is a bad first impression it is so hard for someone to undo that afterwards like first impressions matter the way you start your day matters and then also in regards to first impressions with people and that analogy is we tend to remember the first thing and the last thing mm -hmm. and about an interaction with somebody and so it's very hard to remember all of this stuff in between. And so, like you said, the last thing that you put into your brain in a day is going to impact your sleep. It's going to maybe even potentially impact your dreams. Like, yes. uh, you know, it, it, it matters. It matters. First impressions are huge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. On, on that note, I kind of took that a little bit too far. But yes. No, no, that's great. I mean, it's super helpful. It's true. <laughs> and, and like, also, I personally, I keep my phone outside of my room um, and I put it on airplane mode no later than typically like 8 p.m. Because, again, with like similar to the food environment, if I walk into the kitchen 
after eight and I see that some messages have come through, I know myself, it's too tempting. I'm going to check it. So yeah. by using airplane mode, I just take that out of the equation. I know my mm -hmm. tendency and I'd rather just not have to use that discipline or willpower to like stay yes. away from it, if that makes sense. Oh, totally. I've, I, I um, shared the other day in this group, there is actually something which is called like a phone lock box. And <laughs> it's like this um, plastic container you put your phone in and you set, like, you, you set a time on there. So it's basically, you know, lock it from like 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. or whatever time you want. And um, there is an emergency button. So if you actually need to like call and um, do an emergency call, you can unlock it. But otherwise, you can't access it. <laughs> So, but I mean, it's still like if, if people go through all kinds of things in order to, if that's what you need in order to like refrain from it, good for you. Like go for it. <laughs> Whatever works. Like a lot of people, exactly. um, a lot of people put their Wi-Fi on a timer too, which takes that out. And, and the effort barrier to like change the Wi-Fi back on often <laughs> will just, you know, deter you from doing it all together. You're like, eh, whatever. And that, Again, I feel like I'm harping on the food environment, but if you have to order food versus you have healthful prep food around, you're just making it easier for yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, cool. and as far as the one sort of game-changing thing for me personally, it has been journaling. So oh, cool. I started journaling a year and a half ago, and I, I do it Monday through Friday, first thing in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. And it helps me to set the tone for my day. And it mm -hmm. often, like sometimes I'll write about things that I'm just feeling, experiencing, whatever. I'll often go into things that I'm grateful for. And I go out of my way to be like, you know, I've got it pretty good. And uh, I, I want to not take that for granted. And yeah. journaling helps me to, to just sort of take that lens or that perspective of, I, I, you know, I, I've got a pretty great life and I feel very fortunate to say that. And it's also just been a really cool way to be a better friend to myself, as corny as that sounds, oh, like, that. Yeah. like to check in with me and whatever I write in there, no one else is going to see it. I am 100% honest and it's just mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. Like, I don't have to worry about judgment or, or anything like that or critiques. It's just like, I get to have that time with me and mm. it's just, uh, I, I've genuinely become a better, more, I would say compassionate friend to myself via that process, that journaling process. I love that. That is so, so cool. I would, I mean, you said it's pretty flexible in terms of what you write in there. And um, we have actually had a, um, journaling a 30 day journaling um challenge here in this group before and i'm a big fan of journaling also so I i'd love to know if or what tips you have for someone who's looking to get started i know some people say like okay start with three things you're grateful for or other people they have like a more um review in terms of that's what i did yesterday or a goal setting or so is is there anything that that you follow or you would ha have as a tip for anybody to, who's wanting to start yeah, so I, I actually put in a podcast episode together on how to start cool. journaling. But oh, I'll, I'll make sure to link that. To yeah, you. Yes. to make this more practical for this combo. Like, I mean, it sounds so simple, but just the first thing I write is, you know, hey, man, how you doing? Like, how are you? Mm -hmm. um, and, and genuinely answering that question. Like we, it's, we see people out in public and we're like, how you doing? What's going on? It's, it's very cordial and that's cool too. But genuinely, like how, mm -hmm. how do I feel? How did I sleep? Um, yes. Where am I at? You know, and what am I going through or whatever? The prompts are probably going to be very individual. And at some point I found that it just, it just starts to flow but I don't mm -hmm. rush it in any way. And I don't set a time limit for myself. As soon as I feel like I'm done, I feel like I'm done. And I have a bit of a bit of a, a rhythm or routine with it um, that I've developed, but it sort of shifts and molds as time mm -hmm. goes on. And, um, but as, as far as getting started, just probably like get a a journal or something that you really enjoy writing in like you like the the aesthetic of it the look of it mm -hmm. the feel of it 
I noticed something so funny about myself that I get these, just these cheap books or whatever, but I was writing on both sides of the paper. And mm -hmm. I found that writing on the, I'm right-handed and writing on the back of that, the one page, my hand kept running into the binding and I was finding it so annoying. So I simply <laughs> started just writing on the front of every page. Yes. And it makes it more enjoyable for me. Like who would have thought that it's, like, <laughs> it's so weird, but it was like, that's I was a like, cool oh. hack though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so writing in something that you like and you enjoy the aesthetic of also getting a, a pen that you really like the feel of. I think that that's matters. A big one. Yes. Yeah. I think we underestimate the importance of aesthetics or like just in general, how things feel with everything, like even with, you know, with, with food, your food doesn't always have to be pretty or whatever, but like generally make it colorful, you know, it looks, yeah. looks cool or whatever, or like when you have your cup of coffee, go out on the porch or whatever and look at some flowers as opposed to just sculpting it down and then carrying on or whatever. So like, yeah, d truly with everything, just trying to look for how can I make that a little bit better, 1% better or whatever. That is a great approach, even when it comes to something like a pen. <laughs> So a, a pen, right? Like I have this specific type of, you know, ink ballpoint pen and I, I have like five or six colors and any time that I feel like switching the color up mid sentence or whatever, I just do. And it, it's just like this very sort of flowy thing, but it didn't Ooh. start out that way. But once the mm -hmm. habit and routine is developed, you can sort of play with this stuff and have fun with it. And there are no rules. Like you can use yes. five different colors. You can use whatever pen you want. You can, <laughs> whatever. You can even record your journals. Yes. Um, you can do it via voice, voice recording, like however you want to do it. I've just found it to be so, so beneficial as a, just a life practice, I would say. I, I love it. And what I like too is that you don't um, make yourself do it every single day. Because I think sometimes we're so stuck in like being on and off or that all or nothing thinking, you know, oh, I've missed a day or whatever. And instead it's like, oh no, I, you know, by now it's routine. And if you don't necessarily feel like doing it all the time, then you're not going to do it on that one day. It's fine. Like, for example, if today your flight was at 5 a.m., you might not have journaled. And totally. that's cool. <laughs> As opposed to thinking, oh, I should have done that. And um, so like, I kind of like, I'm... I used to be even more than I am now such a rule and rule and structure person. And um, I initially was like, okay, I need to write exactly this and that three things that I'm grateful for. And then I need to go into how my day is going to look. And at some stage I was like, well, this is turning way too long, first of all. And so I thought if I didn't do the whole page, then I might as well not write at all, which is stupid thinking. So now I'm like, some days I feel like writing three sentences. Other days I write three pages and that's cool. <laughs> but that's it's a awesome. way of, yeah, like writing down what's, what's in, how I'm feeling on that day. So I think um, just to add on to your, I guess, recommendation there, I would, I would totally say make, make it your own. If someone wants to start, make it your own. However, whatever that looks like for you on that day, if that's reflective, if that's goal setting, if that's gratitude, cool. Yeah, and mastering the art of showing up, right? Like, yes. even if you write yes. one line, like that's a win. And and you showed up. And if as far as flights and stuff like that go, I I don't stress about like having to do it the same as you. Um, but if I do miss a day, say on a Thursday, I'll make it up on a Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. And I yeah. I don't stress about it too much. If I don't make it up, it's not the end of the world. But I do think that sort of revisiting it and, and like really hammering that consistency piece in creates something that is truly a habit because yeah. our, our habits can really, they can slip quick. Like, especially yeah. in terms of diet, like, you know, one vacation can throw off months of oh, you know, consistency and hard work as far as just making it difficult to get back on track. Like it, it can be tough. So, um, but yeah, I mean, even just speaking of your your own like weight uh, weight loss thing, when you said you were so dialed in and really strict for six days, and then that one whole cheat day, like 
you know, six, I don't know exactly what that percentage is, but six days out of a week, that's quite a lot, <laughs> you would think, but still that one day throwing everything off is insane. Yeah. And then if I look at it, if I take a step back and look at it as a percentage of total calorie intake, um, I was likely consuming an equivalent amount of calories on that are pretty close to the entire rest of the week combined. And so as a percentage, it, it's actually like 50 50, right, which is why yes. it probably wasn't quite that but you get it's the idea. Still, yes. Yeah. And, and so, oh, man, like, calories add up. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I definitely want to respect your time, but I do have um, one big last question, I guess, um, because you also mentioned like most of your clients are super are super busy. Um, and what what is something that really helps busy people in particular stay on track with everything that you teach or when if someone comes to you you know a successful business person but just really always eating on the go for instance or a busy a mom as well you know mostly taking care of her kids and career and so on how do you simplify that whole those four pillars for them so that they can actually make it part of their lifestyle long term yeah great question so the obvious thing is prepping and planning ahead. Mm. However, I like to take a step back and look at, so when time is limited, productivity is extremely important. And if you are dialing into your nutrition, your movement, your sleep, and your, your stress management, you are going to be so much more productive with your time that if you take an hour once or twice a week to like meal prep ahead, you are going to gain so much productivity on the back end that it is going to be, you know, a compounding interest situation. It is worth it and then some. And so mm -hmm. just acknowledging that what, what that person is doing, like running through the fast food joint to like pick up a burger and fries or whatever, like what is that costing you in terms of attention after that mm -hmm. and energy levels and is it impacting your sleep is it you know you're not reaching your goals that's really frustrating mentally and from a psychological standpoint so just taking a step back and looking at the big picture as opposed to being so like in it day to day like yeah. a fish in water and understanding that taking care of yourself on the front end is going to provide you so much more on the back end no matter how busy you are eating better is going to make you more productive. Like totally. it, it's just, it's not, it's not debatable. The brain functions much better when it's well slept, it's moved yeah. and it's, it's getting the nutrients that it needs. And so just sort of reframing that busyness, but then also setting yourself up for success with prepping and planning. And, um, you know, you might not be able to have, cook every single meal fresh and have it be ready to go because trade-offs, you know, like mm -hmm. prepping in bulk is a really awesome tool to set yourself up for success on the back end. But yeah, just re I think it's important to reframe, you know, busyness and productivity and stuff and understand what someone is giving up by not taking care of themselves on the front yeah. end it's just so so important and i think that the again when you take a step back it is a net win to take a little bit more time up front as opposed to do the convenient thing in that moment so it's sort of like you know the the easy thing now but doing the hard the hard thing now is going to give you so much more on the back end if that makes sense oh uh, it makes 100% sense. I think, first of all, uh, you made a great distinction there between busyness and productivity, because sometimes I think people are just, you know, go, 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 go the whole time. But are they actually being like efficient is probably rather the other word. So for example, when it comes to food, you know, if you go through the drive through or whatever, or you cook separately every single night, half an hour, as opposed to doing a meal prep once a week or twice a week for half an hour or an hour or whatever, that already uh, saves time. And then how many things are you doing that you could be outsourcing? How many things are you doing just because 
you've always done them kind of thing, you know, thinking about that where you can potentially cut down some of the stuff that you're doing. I think that's definitely a good point. And with the taking a step back and looking at investing some, some time up front is so helpful. It's like that whole, I've brought this comparison before, but that whole thought of like, you know, you're driving a car and you think you're, you're too busy, you need to get to your goal to f so fast, you can't stop for gas. <laughs> it just, you know, like you need to stop for, or, or you're working with a chainsaw or, or an X or whatever, which is blunt. You need to, you're, you would be so much quicker and better if, if you'd stop and you sharpened it, <laughs> you'd get, get stuff down in like a third of the time. Um, but, but I, I mean, I'm saying this with all the kindness in my heart, because I think we're all sometimes so wrapped up in our own routines and habits and, and so on that it's hard to take that step back on our own. So it's great to have a coach like you, you know, who says, let's look at this bird's bird's view or whatever. What can we do? What is actually helping you? What could we implement here and there or change um, so that you're actually just doing the things that are bringing you forward? Yeah, totally. In regards to like, whether it's parenting or you're really, really passionate about your job or whatever it is, you know, you are going to be a better parent if you are taking care of yourself. And every yeah. parent loves their children, you know, beyond belief. And just sort of reframing the sense that like, if you can be better at parenting by simply eating, moving and sleeping properly, that is a beautiful thing. And if you don't even want to do it for yourself, but mm -hmm. you want to do it for your kids because you know that, you know, you have, you're more patient when you're well slept and you're taking care of yourself or you're more on point at work and your, your, you know, cognitive functioning is, is better. And it just makes everything better, essentially. Everything. You know? yeah. Yeah, and you, you nailed it when you said the word efficiency, it is that. Mm -hmm. And it's also an investment. It's not yeah. like time spent meal prepping, but time invested. Yes, I, I like that. Yes, Marcus, thank you so, so much for all your incredible takeaways here. I think people watching this and people watching the replay and on YouTube are going to get a ton out of this. So thank you for your time. I hope you have a great flight to Houston and that you enjoy your time there. I, I've never been to Houston. I think the closest I got was Austin. And I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed my time in Texas in general. So I'm sure you're going to have a blast also. Well, thanks so much for having me. This was so fun. I really enjoyed yes, it. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, yeah. I could talk about this stuff all day. So it's like, <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you. I, I've been to Austin. It's a super cool city, but I haven't been to Houston. I've done Dallas, but I haven't been to Houston yet. And I'm stoked to check out Alpha Land. So we'll see what that's like. Cool. Well, yeah, have fun. And I'm going to drop your social media handle and your website um, in the comments also. Um, and I'll be in touch with uh, sending you the replay link. So thank you and have a wonderful Friday. Amazing. Thanks, Lisa. You too. Bye. Bye.